Hello friends, welcome to week six's q and It's joined by my lovely wife, Lucy. Hi. Uh, Lucy will ask me some questions. Uh, go ahead and ask the next one. All right, the next question is by um, Shalupamatej. Sorry about that. Um, he said, hey Leo, Leo uh, in a conversation with Amin, you both mentioned using tamoxifen over anastrozole or other AIs to prevent a gynoan cycle. Most people, including Dave Palombo, go against that method since Tamox tanks your IGF production. So what's the methodology behind that? Okay, very good question. Uh, thank you, Lucy. Um, Chalupa, well, l let me just tell you, Lucy, what they're asking about. So basically, when um, bodybuilders go on cycles, mm -hmm. they uh, experience, because they take testosterone, the, bo the body has a balancing system where it raises estrogen. It, it does that also as well as aromatizes some of the testosterone mm -hmm. that's the main factor really the aromatization of the testosterone so aromatization testosterone can do two things in the body well three things it can stay testosterone or it can be changed uh, into dihydrotestosterone or it can be changed into estrogen so what they do is uh, bodybuilders experience high levels of estrogen and there's two two reasons that bodybuilders will try to affect this one reason is if they have uh, breast tissue glands which usually almost all men have not all men have much of it but most men have and the, the, the amount that they have varies mm -hmm. um, glandular breast tissue is like hard tissue it's not fat it's under the nipple and if their estrogen level go, gets too high if they're prone to it it'll grow right and you see sometimes when you're a teenager in high school some of the men experience this because their testosterone goes very high it aromatizes to estrogen and they start to get puffy nipples right the other thing the other reason that they try to limit estrogen is because estrogen uh one of the reasons women are often more bloated than men is because of estrogen estrogen causes um uh, water retention in the body so bodybuilders that are taking a high amount of testosterone and have a lot of estrogen will experience a bloat on their face you remember my face mm -hmm. used to be bloated yeah. and they don't like that so they'll take uh, what's called an AI which is uh, uh, an, an aromatase inhibitor aromatase is the enzyme that converts testosterone into estrogen so they take that to inhibit the conversion of the testosterone into the estrogen they could also be doing this because they think that they're maximizing the amount of testosterone they're mm -hmm. getting for the money they're paying but that doesn't really make sense because the testosterone is very cheap so it doesn't that, that's not a really a good reason but so basically, that's the reason they do that, right? And what he was asking about was Novadex, uh, tamoxifen. Tamoxifen is a selective estrogen receptor modulator, which means it selectively um, modulates the estrogenic activity at estrogen receptors in certain parts of the body. Uh, it's primarily used for women that are breast cancer patients. It's uh, given usually at 10 milligrams twice a day, that's 20 milligrams. Um, to prevent breast tissue from growing in response to the estrogen in the body because for these women the estrogen is Could kill them, right? Yeah, okay. so but now feet now trials there have been many trials that compare tamoxifen the CERN to uh, The aromatase inhibitors which uh, there are three main ones aromasin arimidex and letrozole um, All of the trials compare the two of them Together, there are no trials that take a woman with breast cancer and let her be, and give her and they give the other group uh, tamoxifen. Yeah. So basically, there's no, there's especially no double-blind placebo-controlled mm -hmm. trials. There are not, right? So this is where the issue comes. So Chalupa, you actually asked a good question, a uh, really good question. Um, first of all, let me tell you, Amin does not uh, particularly, I think, have a strong opinion on this. It's mainly me that's responsible, so I take the blame or whatever for the controversy for this comment. Um, there are many people, like uh, Dave Palumbo, who will recommend that people do not use Novadex. But these people also recommend that people get their glandular tissue removed. The, the, Dave Palumbo will tell all of you that if you're a bodybuilder, remove the glandular tissue. He will not tell you uh, use an anti-estrogen and keep your tissue. No. Because the anti-estrogen is not selective. So it can reduce the estrogen all around your body, but if you're sensitive, you can still grow the glandular mm -hmm. tissue. So it doesn't have, and how much do you have to lower estrogen if you're sensitive to be able to stop the tissue from growing? You have to lower, you have to like really lower it to the point where you're now estrogen deficient. You have a low estrogen level. Now we know estrogen, it does a lot of things. I mean, we were just doing a video on uh, brain, um, on neurotrophic factors. Estrogen is one of the primary hormones that affect neuronal development in the brain in adulthood. 
So you dr dr dramatically drop your estrogen. You have it. You have, it's also cardio protective. Estrogen has been given to uh, people with heart disease to try to prevent their heart disease from getting worse. It wasn't successful, but it is cardio protective. It's one reason that people think that women do not get heart disease as much as men. So lowering your estrogen very low because you have a sensitivity to your, your, your nipples, is that the way to go or is it to take this thing that selectively on the nipple totally prevents growth? Now we're talking about 20 milligrams a day of Novadex, of tamoxifen, will stop breast cancer, women with breast cancer from, I mean, just completely stop the growth. So men take it, they're not, if you, if you're, if you have a propensity to get uh, gynecomastia and you take tamoxifen, it's not going to grow. It's simply not going to, but if you take an anti-estrogen and you have to keep playing with the dose and seeing how much estrogen you have, mm -hmm. you may, I've, see, I've, I've had clients and friends develop gyno on high doses of anti-estrogens. I have never known anyone to do so on Nov Novadex. Never, never, ever. And it's been 15 years I've been involved in this. So um, that's my, my answer about gynecomastia. Now he mentioned that tamoxifen tanks IGF-1. Mm -hmm. That is true. Tamoxifen does two things to, to this. First of all, it prevents growth hormone from being released in response to growth. Uh, uh, a gro Basically, it breaks down the growth hormone releasing uh, uh, stream in the body. So it limits growth hormone. It also limits IGF-1's ability to bind to the IGF-1 receptor. So it does two things there. It, overall, it can reduce the, the, the IGF-1 activity in the body by about 40%. That's huge. It is tax. He's right. It's 40%. Now, the question is this, right? If you're a bodybuilder, you want to know something. Do you have, are you one of those people that responds to IGF-1? Because you probably aren't. I, I mean, I don't know about yourself, but I would tell you something. When you see a lot of bodybuilders that take high doses of growth hormone and they are not huge, like I'm talking about Phil Heath, uh, Dexter Jackson kind of big, you got to be I mean, even Dexter Jackson, he lives in LA. I've seen him in person many times. The kind of muscle we're talking about on these people, they're taking the same amount of gear as everybody else. They're not taking that much more. I mean, they're really not taking that so much the more. Receptor the receptor right. works so well. And not just, these people don't just have an IGF-1 receptor work that works well. They have a growth hormone receptor that works completely well. They have a bunch of other things going on. And these are things that, you know, science hasn't completely revealed yet. We know how to test the IGF-1 receptor. I do that for all our clients. So I tell them from the beginning, hey, growth hormone is not going to work on you, so don't even worry about it, you know, or we take, check the growth hormone receptor. But there's a lot of other little things going on. Like I know how to test for, uh, you know, like myostatin, but I don't know, we don't have enough clinical studies to show what are the difference, different effects on each myostatin polymorphism on athletic ability. So we don't completely understand all of this. But what we do know is that, and by the way, if you guys go to these like muscle genes websites and stuff to get your things tested, someone yesterday sent me a message saying, hey, I know that I'm a, I have a genotype that makes me uh, release adrenaline quickly. So uh, what can I do to stop this? I told them, how in the world could you know that? Because I'm the only person that I know in the whole community that studies genes in that level of detail. So who told you that? He said, uh, I tested my genes on muscle genes. I never heard of this company even. I said, okay. Can you send me which polymorphism they are telling you indicated this? And by the way, it cannot be one polymorphism. Adrenaline is not affected by one polymorphism. So it's really ridiculous. It's really multifactorial. So I was like, oh, interesting. So this company is really doing some detailed analysis, something like what I do. So please send me the polymorphisms. He sent me back a picture that said, your adrenaline is high. And there's no polymorphism mentioned. There's no information. And I was like, is there any, are you missing something? He said, no, I'm going to contact the company and try to find out. They're both, but it's bullshit. These guys, the company is just, you know, there are, there's a lot of bullshit in this industry. But the point, all I'm trying to get to, the point is, um, you have to know how your polymorphisms react to things to understand how these things will affect you in the first place. So you might say people's IGF-1 tanks 40%, but these people may have tiny amounts of IGF-1 anyway. They could be taking huge amounts of growth hormone. The IGF-1 is not increasing that much. The, many people develop muscle through mechanisms other than IGF-1. IGF-1, it is the primary growth factor in the body, but it's not the only way muscles grow, right? So there's a lot of things that are involved in muscles growing. You may not be someone that's dependent on IGF-1. So you may not have to worry about that that much. And then keep in mind another thing. Your IGF-1 is decreasing, but you're also, t you're eating protein, you're working out, you're taking testosterone, you're doing all these other things that increase your IGF-1 as well. So the point is, look, I, I agree with the guy saying that, yeah, it will affect IGF-1. It will. But another thing that I should mention is that I don't like IGF-1. 
Because IGF-1, as I mentioned in other videos before, is that IGF-1 is the primary hormone that uh, speeds up cancer development. I mean, the primary hormone, if you're talking about hormones, it's IGF-1. So when you talk, so for example, uh, tamoxifen precisely has been shown to reduce uh, melanoma risk dr dramatically it, it, and, and prevent the progression of melanoma because of its effect on IGF-1. So IGF-1, if you have a constantly ri rising IGF-1, to be honest with you, if I went back into bodybuilding, I would probably do something to lower my IGF-1, IGF not bodybuilding, if I went back into athletic sports, I was not in bodybuilding, but if I was lifting again and muscular like when you first met me, I would take something to lower my IGF-1 because my biggest concern with that lifestyle is IGF-1. Mm -hmm. My biggest, there are many concerns like eating too frequently, all that stuff. You can affect it with fasting, but if your IGF-1 is always up, you're gonna, you have a big problem going on. You're basically, IGF-1 is making your cells duplicate. You're in an inflammatory state. So because you're in an inflammatory state, your cells, your DNA is getting damaged over time. And you're forcing those DNAs to replicate with the IGF-1. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna accrue over time damage in your body and be much more likely to develop cancers. And guys, in the 70s and 80s, bodybuilding, what we used to see, or, or even early 90s, is we used to see uh, heart problems, cardiovascular problems, like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, quadruple by bypass, yeah, surgery. Wow. Uh, all of those guys had a little bit of uh, cardiovascular problems. Usually they died in their early 70s or early 80s max, and usually from cardiovascular disease. Now we see people getting cancers in their 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, like for example, uh, I mean, I don't want to name names because I want to have all, all respect to these people, but it's very common now, people getting cancer, some melanomas that they can quickly cut off or something easy, and some very serious cancers, colorectal cancers, thyroid cancer, I mean, thyroid maybe not so serious, but there are many kinds of cancers going on. And so a lot of this has to do with this IGF-1 manipulation. So what I would advise you to do is just be careful with this idea that I always want my IGF-1 up. And, and uh, let me get to another point about tamoxifen before I finish. Tamoxifen, and this is very interesting, tamoxifen lowers, tamoxifen is not only, so not only is IGF-1 bad for your health, but tamoxifen is extremely good for your cardiovascular health, which is what we just talking about, the original problem of the body. Bodies. Tamoxifen lowers apolipoprotein B, which by the way guys, hey, I'm gonna do a video one day on lipidology and stuff like that, a detailed video series. But LDL cholesterol, what is that? That is low density lipoprotein cholesterol. Low density lipoproteins have inside them cholesterol and a protein. That's why they're called lipoproteins, right? Mm -hmm. Fat and protein. The protein that they have is called apolipoprotein B. There is one apolipoprotein B for every particle that someone has of LDL. The actual uh, particle number through ApoB is reduced by tamoxifen by 20 to 30 percent. This is huge. This is like a statin. It's huge. I mean, it's it's crazy. In fact, the first CIRM, selective estrogen receptor modulator, that was brought to market, raloxifen, was touted widely for its effects on cardiovascular health. I mean, there's maybe few few drugs that can affect cardiovascular health as much as no, uh, tamoxifen and uh, and uh, raloxifen and these these drugs. So. So it reduces uh, apolipoprotein B, it reduces LDL cholesterol by, 20, by like 30%. Apoprotein B, I think by 20% in some studies. Um, raloxifen was shown to decrease apolipoprotein B by like eight, five to 8%, eight which is huge too. By the way, like a 3% is huge. I mean, this is a big deal because that's literally the particle that builds up, uh, that causes the buildup of plaque in the arteries and eventually causes atherosclerosis where you either get a stroke, an aneurysm, your heart gives up from having to pump through these uh, plaque-filled uh, arteries. Uh, and what, what Arnold Schwarzenegger got, which is the quadruple bypass because he had coronary, um, uh, coronary atherosclerosis that he had to deal with. So uh, Novadex, tamoxifen, significantly reduces this risk. So now what are we looking at with this? And, and by the way, guys, and let me answer the question from the beginning. The reason why most people recommend that you do not use anti-estrogens or uh, uh, aromatase inhibitors is because it is thought that they uh, cause cardiovascular disease. Now, this is sort of a misunderstanding. Uh, I've been guilty of saying it before in the past. It, two or three years ago, I really thought that the actual, because I, the research was not clear. I thought that the AIs themselves were what was causing the, the severe plaque buildup uh, that's found among bodybuilders. Because 
the studies done on this subject, as I mentioned earlier, they're not uh, blind, uh, placebo-controlled clinical studies. They're studies in which one group of women took tamoxifen and one group of women took an anti-aromatase uh, inhibitor. And the ones that took the aromatase inhibitor had much worse cardiovascular health. But the reason may be because the tamoxifen made their cardiovascular, the other group that took cardiovascular health much better. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much, so re before 2015, even car uh, you know, uh, w people that specialize in women's health and stuff like that, they thought that the AIs were causing the bad health. But recently there have been more studies that show that it seems to be just the nature of the studies, how they're designed. And rather it's the tamoxifen that improves cardiovascular health so much that confused the results. And maybe it's not true that although this is as I say I and mean, this is not clear like there's a Chinese meta meta study from 2017 I read a, few, a couple of months ago that showed that uh, the, the the three AIs across a bunch of studies increased uh, worsened lipid markers and cardiovascular health for women uh, without a comparison to Novadex but I have to dig deeper in that study to see how what the nature of it was so the point is it's not completely clear do AIs cause cardi cardiovascular disease it's not completely clear they may not. Tamoxifen definitely impo improves cardiovascular health. Tamoxifen does decrease IGF-1. Do you want IGF-1 high all the time? Do you even want it high at all? I'm not really sure because your lifestyle is already raising IGF-1 so much, especially if you're using drugs like testosterone and stuff like that, but even just the protein, even the working out, I'm not sure that a 40% reduction is that bad for you. And you may be someone that is not g genetically blessed or cursed, in my opinion, cursed with a functioning IGF-1 receptor. Like Lucy, Lucy has a functioning IGF-1 receptor. Hers is perfectly functioning. If she takes, uh, you know, tamoxifen, it will re reduce her gains from, from weightlifting, but not so for me. So uh, I hope that answered your question, Chalupa. Sorry for being a bit long-winded. It's a complicated subject. It's not clear to everyone yet what the correct answer is. In my opinion, if you are at risk for, for glandular growth, Personally, I would take tamoxifen and to be honest with you, I would get the surgery because there's no, if you're young, if, if you have a shot at the, look, if you're going to take testosterone or anabolic steroids for like 10 years or so, then get the damn surgery ahead of time and save yourself all that worrying and headache and trouble because I tell you something, if you're not using tamoxifen, the gland will grow. At some points, it will grow a little bit. You will have a little bit. It may not be visible, but you'll know it. It'll bother you psychologically. It'll get on your nerves. Seriously, he, get the surgery. The surgery costs ten to $15,000 if you get it from a good doctor. That's the problem. Uh, that's the problem. And by the way, if you're going to get the surgery, I have a recommendation on a surgeon, one of the best, not that guy in New York, Everyone knows what I'm talking about. He's an old man and he makes a lot of mistakes in the surgeries. There are better doctors out there, uh, and but it costs you money. But if you if you're spending so much on growth hormone and all these things, IGF one, and get the surgery and save yourself the trouble, and then you don't have to worry about it. Then if you take the moxifen, you may take it for your cardiovascular health. And if you take an AI, you take it because you're bloated, you know, and you just reduce it to a normal level of estrogen. So I hope that helps. Uh, thank you so much for listening. And we'll see you next time. Please like, subscribe, and enable notifications as well. And visit my website, leoandlongevity.com. I have a new blog posted as well. Thank you, guys.